We are gathering in Christ, sharing his love. And we are here to love, listen, learn, and lead. We're glad that you've joined us here at Gloria Day Lutheran Church in Leesburg, Florida, for this the Sunday that we commemorate the baptism of our Lord. We pray that through our worship service here, you might be inspired and might feel a little closer drawn to God through it. Please remember to call someone after the service. A call is worth a thousand texts or emails. It's always nice to hear another voice on the other end of the phone. Uh, so please continue to share the love that you receive here with others. All are welcome to join us on Tuesday afternoon at 2 o'clock for our drive-in communion. You can partake of the sacrament and uh, be inspired on Tuesday afternoons in the safety and comfort of your own vehicle. Uh, if you need a ride, please call or email the church office. Members, please plan to join us for our Zoom virtual coffee hour every Sunday morning at 11 a.m., uh, the link is in your email. Uh, please note that on the 24th of January, we will be holding our annual congregational meeting during our coffee hour time at 11. So please uh, plan to attend that very important meeting via Zoom. Worship will continue for the foreseeable future uh, online only. Uh, please pray for an end to this pandemic and pray that the vaccines that are given out uh, these days uh, will be effective against it. Now, would you please join me at the font as together we confess our sins and hear the words of forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace! Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. 
Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Acts, the 19th chapter. 
While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about twelve of them. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descended like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace be yours from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Back when the telegraph was the fastest means of long-distance communication, there was a legend about a young man who applied for a job as a Morse code operator. Answering an ad in the newspaper, he went to the address that was listed. When he arrived, he entered a large, noisy office. In the background, a telegraph clacked away. A sign on the receptionist's counter instructed job applicants to fill out a form and wait until they were summoned to enter the inner office. The young man completed his form and sat down with seven other waiting applicants. After a few minutes, the young man stood up, crossed the room to the door of the inner office, and walked right in. Naturally, the other applicants perked up, wondering what was going on. Why had this young man been so bold? And of course, they muttered among themselves that they hadn't heard any summons yet. They took more than a little satisfaction in assuming that the young man who went into the office would be reprimanded for his presumptuousness and summarily disqualified for the job. Within a few minutes, the young man emerged from the inner office, escorted by the interviewer, who announced to the other applicants, gentlemen, thank you very much for coming, but the job has been filled by this young man. The other applicants started grumbling amongst themselves, and then one spoke up and he said, Wait a minute, I don't understand. He was the last one to come in, and we never even got a chance to be interviewed, yet he got the job. This just isn't fair. 
And the employer responded, all the time you've been sitting here, the telegraph that you heard has been clicking away the following message in Morse code. If you understand this message, then come right in. The job is yours. None of you heard it or understood it. This young man did. So, the job is his. Our livelihood, our very lives, depend upon our ability to hear and to understand the meaning of the words that we've just heard in Scripture. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. The father spoke these words to his only son following his baptism in the river Jordan. And God speaks these same words to all of us who are baptized. You are my child whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. God speaks these words to us because at baptism, we become heirs with Christ and share in his heavenly inheritance. We receive salvation, the forgiveness of sins, and eternal life through water and the word. Today we commemorate the baptism of Jesus Christ our Lord. Baptism is a powerful force in the life of Christians. It's something we have in common with Christians all around the world. Go to Ireland and the man you meet has been baptized. Go to Nigeria and the woman you meet has been baptized. Many of you have seen on TV the old black and white video footage of the civil rights marches in the 60s. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who more often than not placed himself at the very front of those marches, received his share of stinging high-pressured water hoses. Reverend King once remarked that he and the other marchers had a common strength. He put it this way, as we went before the fire hoses, we had known water. If we were a Baptist or some other denomination, we had been immersed. If we were a Methodist or some other, we had been sprinkled, but we knew water. You and I know the water. All of God's children know the water. We share by our faith this common symbol, this initiation, this right, this power of God over the deep and often raging chaos of life. We know the water that brings us peace. All over the world, baptism unites us. Shortly after I arrived at my first parish after seminary, I taught a pre-baptismal class. Most of the attendees were young parents who had brought in their infant children, but there was one precocious and very well-mannered and beautiful young man by the name of Matthew. He was about eight years old. His mother wanted him to be baptized because she had never quite gotten around to it. During the class, I mentioned that when we are baptized, we are all joined with Christ as God's children. I reminded Matthew that after he was baptized that I would still be his pastor, but I would also be his brother in Christ. Well, the day of the baptisms, when I was done shaking hands at the end of the service, young Matthew came up to me, smiled at me, stuck his hand out and said, put her there, brother. His words embodied the true spirit of that connection and the new relationship that baptism brings. I found another story that talks about the true meaning of baptism and how it changes our lives. Sarah Jo Sarche is a Presbyterian minister. She tells the story of a 10-year-old boy in her congregation named Cameron who walked into her office one afternoon and said he needed to talk to her. He had just finished soccer practice and his hair was still disheveled from the exercise and he told her he had a request. He asked, I'd like to be baptized. We were learning about Jesus' baptism in Sunday school and the teacher asked the class who had been baptized and everybody raised their hand except for me. 
So I want to be baptized too. Well, using her best pastoral care tone of voice, she said, Cameron, do you really want to be baptized just because everybody else is? His freckles winked up at her and he replied, no, I want to be baptized because it means I belong to God. She was touched by his understanding. Well then, she said, how about this Sunday? Cameron's smile disappeared and his brow furrowed with concern and he asked, do I have to be baptized in front of all those people in the church? Can't I just have a friend baptize me in the river? And the pastor asked where he came up with that idea. And he said, well, Jesus was baptized by his cousin John in the river. Why not me? Caught off guard, she conceded. You have a point, Cameron, but if a friend baptized you in the river, how would the church recognize it? And thinking this would be a great teachable moment, she climbed up on her footstool to reach for her Presbyterian book of order that was located on the highest shelf. But before she placed her hand on the book, Cameron responded with, I guess they'd recognize it by my new way of living. Well, the pastor nearly fell off her footstool and left the book of order up on the shelf. Cameron's understanding of baptism was neither childish nor simple. It was at the very root profound. Baptism calls us to a new way of living. May you live out your baptism each and every day by sharing God's love and being the face of Jesus to others. Thanks be to God. Amen. was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the Church, the world, and all people in need. For the Church throughout the world and its leaders, that guided by the Holy Spirit, they proclaim the forgiveness of sins. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For wilderness and water, wind and wild beast, and all living things on earth, that God's goodness is revealed through creation, and faithful stewards care for all God has made. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the nations of the world and their leaders, for laborers busy both day and night, and for peacemakers amid strife, that God inspire all people to use their strength wisely. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the sick and those who provide medical care, especially those who suffer from COVID-19 and those who, are, who care for them, for the imprisoned and those who show them mercy, for the lonely and those who provide companionship, for all who suffer, especially Jan, Sam, Richard, Jane, Fred, Anne, Edith, Bill, Ron, Jeannie, and those we name before you now on our lips or in our hearts. That God may shower compassion and healing upon them. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For our congregation and all who join us for worship, for students returning to school, for those seeking renewal in their daily work, that all the beloved of God experience grace and peace. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed, who now rest from their labors, that their witness inspire us in our baptismal vocations. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share a sign of that peace with those who might be watching this video with you. And as always, please call someone on the phone after the service and share that same peace with them. Normally, we would take up our offering at this time, but uh, we're about 10 months into not normal. Uh, this is our new normal, and we do thank those who have continued to bring their tithes and offerings into the church office or have given through the mail or through the portal on our website. For those of you who are suffering financial hardship because of COVID-19, know that we continue to pray for an end and we keep you all in our prayers.
Spirit strengthen you. Jesus, the Beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. We know it's Tuesday afternoon. It is so good to be back in town and to be back here with all of you. It's a glorious day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We are gathering in Christ, sharing His love, and we are here to love, listen, learn, and lead. We are going to be celebra celebrating, if I could say it, we're celebrating Epiphany today. Epiphany is technically tomorrow on the 6th of January. Uh, but we are going to be celebrating that today. So we get to hear again the story of the Magi as they came to celebrate the birth of the baby Jesus. Again, just uh, for a little housekeeping, please uh, remain in your cars with the windows up. If you do want to get out um, after the service and talk to anybody, please wear your mask. Uh, try to stay six feet away. I know that's hard, uh, but we certainly do keep everybody in our prayers hoping for a safe and healthy new year. Please, uh, if you would, uh, take your communion elements right now. Take the uh, wrapping off of both pieces of the elements so that you'll have them ready by the time we get to the communion service. And again, it is so good to be uh, gathered together for where two or more are gathered in the name of Jesus Christ. He is there in the midst of them. 
uh, and the Holy Spirit visits us and brings us peace and joy. Now let us confess our sins and hear the words of forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, on this day you revealed your Son to the nations by the leading of a star. Lead us now by faith to know your presence in our lives, and bring us at last to the full vision of your glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at his rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. Calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. be yours from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Aha! That little two-syllable word. Say that and people think you've uncom uncovered something new, something exciting, something startling. And now in this season of Epiphany, that's our 50 cent word for aha, Epiphany. Epiphany is a discovering, an uncovering, a manifestation. So why do we refer to this day as the Epiphany of our Lord? Well, because the three magi followed the star and found the Christ child. When they got to Bethlehem, there they found Jesus and they bowed down and paid him homage, not only with their hearts, but with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. It was the light of a star that led them to Jesus, and Jesus is the light of the world. Here's a cute story about a couple angels and their encounter with the light. I hope you'll think about as you leave this place 
to spread the gospel to others. Once upon a time, a very young angel was touring God's infinite creation with a senior angel. The senior angel pointed out the majesty and splendor of stars and planets and galaxies and universes. But after a while, the little angel started to get overwhelmed by it all and also a little tired and, as younger people do, got a little bored. She had been shown all of these whirling galaxies and blazing suns, and in her mind there seemed to be an awful lot of it. Finally they got to the Milky Way. As the two of them drew near to a star that we call our sun and toward its circling planets, the senior angel pointed to a small and rather insignificant sphere turning on its axis. It looked as dull as a dirty tennis ball to the little angel whose mind was still really for the size and vastness of the universe. The senior angel said, I want you to watch that one in particular. Well, said the little angel, it looks rather small and rather dirty to me. What's so special about that one? The senior angel said, this is the visitant planet. Visitant, said the little one. You don't mean by, yes I do. The ball, which I have no doubt looks rather small and insignificant and probably not over clean to you, has been visited by none other than the Prince of Glory. At these words he bowed his head reverently. The little angel's face wrinkled with disgust. Do you mean to tell me, she said, that he stooped so low as to become one of those creeping, crawling creatures of that floating ball? I do, said the senior angel, and I don't think he would like you calling them creeping, crawling creatures in that tone of voice. For strange as it may seem to us, he loves them all. He went down to visit them so that he could lift them up, so that they could be like him. Now the little angel's expression just went blank. Such a thought for her was just beyond any comprehension. Seeing her glazed expression, the senior angel said, close your eyes for a minute, and we will go back in what they call time. While the little angel's eyes were closed and the two of them moved nearer to this spinning ball, it stopped its spinning and it spun backward quite fast for a while until it slowly resumed its usual rotation. Now look, said the senior angel. The little angel looked down intently and there appeared here and there on the dull surface of this little globe flashes of light, some lasting only for a moment or two, but some lasting for quite some time. The little angel didn't know what was going on and asked, What am I seeing now? You, my little one, said the senior angel, are watching this tiny, seemingly insignificant world as it was thousands of years ago. Every flash and glow of light that you see is something of the Father's knowledge and wisdom breaking into the hearts and minds of the people who live on the earth. Not many people, you see, can hear his voice or understand what he says, even though he's talking to all of them gently, all of the time. But the junior angel said rather coarsely, Why are they so blind and deaf and stupid? The senior angel calmly said, It's not for us to judge them. We who live in the splendor of heaven have no idea what it's like to live in darkness. But watch carefully because you're about to see something truly wonderful. The earth went on turning and circling around the sun and then suddenly in the upper half of the globe there appeared a tiny light. That tiny light was so intense that both angels had to cover their eyes. I think I can guess, said the little angel, that was the visit, wasn't it? Yes, that was the visit. The light himself went down there and lived among them. Open your eyes now. The dazzling light is gone. The prince has returned to his home of light. But watch the earth now.
they both looked on. In place of this dazzling light was a bright glow which throbbed and pulsated, and then, as the earth turned many times, little points of light spread out. A few flickered and died, but for the most part the lights burned steadily, and as the angels continued to watch, the glow spread even further into every corner of the earth. The senior angel looked down at the little angel and said, Do you see what's happening? The light is the faithful followers he left behind, and with his help, they spread the glow, and now lights begin to shine all over the earth. Yes, yes, said the little angel impatiently, but how does it end? Will the little lights join up with one another? Will it be all light as it is here in heaven? The senior angel could only shake his head. We simply don't know. The end is not yet. But now I am sure you can see why this little ball is so important because he has visited it. Yes, said the little angel, I see, but I still don't understand. But I will never forget that this is the visited planet. We live on this planet that has been visited by the light, the true light that has come into the world and who left his light, the Holy Spirit, to shine in our lives. I can only pray that all of us might be able to see that light, say, aha, and then go and share that light with the rest of the world. Thanks be to God. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Let us enter our Holy Supper with joy. This time I would like you to reverently take the wafer. This is the body of Christ, given for you. Be ye all of it. shed for you, drinking all of it. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O Lord, for this gift of life, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray that through it we might be strengthened in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now hear the benediction. 
Almighty God, who sent the Holy Spirit to Mary, proclaim joy through the angels, sent the shepherds with good news, and led the Magi by a star. Bless you this day through the Word made flesh. Amen. Go in peace. Share the gift of Jesus. Thanks be to God. This concludes our service. If you would, please wait just a second while I have a chance to get my mask on and go up to the entrance so that I can give everyone, again, a COVID-approved sign of peace. God bless you all.